Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, meteorologist DT from weatherrisk.com, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe, the commander of chaos. It's time to talk about weather. Lots to talk about here in this edition on this uh, late Sunday night, early Monday morning. Uh, I'll talk about tropical depression number eight tropical depression number nine and uh, maybe something new coming off Africa so there is some activity in the tropics a nice Labor Day weekend coming up for everybody in the east coast and a rather warm pattern here for mid-September maybe longer and we'll talk about why that is going to be warm why it's going to last and how warm is it going to be first we'll start out with tropical depression number uh, I guess this is number nine yes and you can see this system that's got a circulation no doubt about that but a lot of mass clouds now this is the infrared picture here i'm showing you and you can see uh a lot of clouds there and there's some curvature in uh, cyclonic curvature in the bands you can see in this way so on and so forth as such but it doesn't do much the official track does this um you know big letdown from what it was all looking like before in some of the models only a few days ago but it is going to develop into a tropical storm it looks like this is the uh early monday morning hurricane model as you can see it develops it by 72 to 84 hours out it takes it in the big bend of florida and then off the florida coast um there was some concern that it might parallel the uh, southeastern Carolina coast from Georgia to Hatteras, but that does not look likely now. This is tropical depression number 10, and this thing is also an insignificant piece of nothing, uh, but it's there. And uh, you can see the low-level center. You see the, how the clouds are like, curved? You see them drawing the black lines in here? See the, so there's the center, but all the convection is to the northwest of it. Uh, again, this is not a huge or big deal system. And if you look at the weather models, they all take it far, close to Hatteras, 36 to 48 hours, and then bend it rapidly to the east, northeast, and out to sea as the next, as that cold front comes in and uh, kicks it. So it might reach Hatteras, maybe, but if it does, it's just going to be a little bit of wind and rain, not a big deal. Now, this here is uh, from the early Sunday morning European model, and I have these two maps reversed, unfortunately. So let's take a look at this map here first. Let's look at this one right here first. And this is the early morning one, as you can see. And uh, what I wanted to point out here was uh, this was the, the system, the uh, European model early Sunday morning had taken tropical depression number nine and developed into a hurricane and then took it right along the Hatteras coast, as you can see. And this was the next big tropical wave coming in for Africa. But... Um, uh, then, of course, by uh, day 10, you can see the system is now moving like this, all east of Hatteras. And then here's the next big system from Africa coming in as a powerful hurricane, maybe threatening Florida, the southeastern U.S. sometime around uh, February, uh, excuse me, September, February, September uh, 7th or 8th. So that's what the European model was showing this morning. But the new afternoon, Sunday afternoon European model is significantly different. This here is tropical depression uh, number nine. And you can see it's much weaker, never becomes a hurricane. And the system from Africa is much weaker. That's Gaston, by the way. And then if you look again at day 10, insignificant tropical depression, and then a big area of high pressure here, a storm off of southeast of Newfoundland, and the kind of warm over the eastern United States. So vastly different scenario. Uh, so no reason to get really excited about how this is, might be developing. I think uh, we're not in a particularly good setup here for tropical development. A lot of systems, but nothing that's really going to go boom here over the next week or so. Now, this is the coast off Africa. This is the British satellite picture. And you have highlighted in yellow the next big system coming off for Africa. It has some cyclonic circulation to it, you can see, but it's not as big as it was looking a couple of days ago. 24 hours ago, 48 hours ago, this was a much bigger looking system in the tropical equatorial Africa. And that's one of the reasons why the European model was so bullish with the system. But this Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, Monday morning, it does not look as impressive as it did before. Okay, let's take a look at the overall pattern here. And this is as of August 24th. Now, uh, if you're a weather hobbyist, you know that normally when you see a ridge on the West Coast, like we see here, and a block over eastern Canada that usually means a trough over the eastern United States. There's our block and there's our ridge. You can see that right here. But this is a different pattern. And one of the reasons it's different is because we're in the summer months. So the wavelengths during the summer months are different. So with the same patterns, the same ridges, the same teleconnections, the same troughs, which means something in the winter, don't mean the same thing in the summer. 
so here we have our ridge on the west coast you can see that very nicely and here's our block but it's not producing a trough on the east coast at all and this is as of august 24th when it was beastly hot out and the reason for that is because the vortex is over here on the siberian side of the north pole so we have a low here we have a high here we have a low here and we end up with a high here you know a trough ridge trough ridge and that produces another dome so as a result we do get a little bit of a trough in eastern Canada, but the wavelength, the overall pattern setup is different. And that's one of the reasons why it would have been so warm in August, even though we have what seems to be indications of the pattern turning colder or at least cooler. Now, this is as of August 28th. This is as of a Sunday. Here we have the huge block. You can see this over north central Canada. And again, if you're a winter weather lover, you like the cold weather patterns, you see this, you go, hey, that's a negative Arctic oscillation. How come there's not a trough on the eastern United States? Well, again, the wavelength is different. So here we have our vortex. Here's our ridge. And there's another low here. So here's a low our high or a ridge here and there's another trough there and there's another ridge here so again low high low high and that's the way the pattern is shaping up very rex blocky a lot of ways here very mega block pattern setting up here where everything is wrapped on top of each other so the pattern stays stable and it's going to look that way it's going to for as, as far as we can see and let me show you why now this is the uh, european model here for for the 31st of august going into the beginning of the hot labor day weekend we can see a big trough on the west coast an upper level low here in eastern canada and a big ridge over the, the central rockies into central canada and uh, what happens is that that big ridge there develops allows the upper low over eastern Canada to back a trough into the United, eastern United States and the pattern turns somewhat cooler. Let me show you. This is the 96 hour map and you can see that trough drops in here from eastern Canada. Let me get my marker out here so you can see what I'm talking about. The upper low is over here and it drives in this way. So the pattern goes like this and then it goes like this. And that allows for a pretty nice Labor Day weekend coming up uh, up and down the east coast. And this is the GFS model. Now you can see this is valid for Saturday, September 3rd. Look at those 40s in the Shenandoah Valley, eastern uh, West Virginia, western Maryland, into Pennsylvania. Now, that may be overdone, but it definitely is a cooler pattern, and that's going to seem pretty nice here. The European is not as cool as the GFS. It's a little cooler than yesterday, but it's still not as cool. Um, and then sometimes the European can have a warm bias with its temperatures by a few degrees, just like the GFS can have a cold bias. And this is as of the morning of September 4th. And again, a nice cool morning here on the 4th. Now, as we come out of the holiday weekend, the problem is that the heat comes back. Let me show you. Here's our uh, trough right here on the east coast. It's now moving out to sea in this direction. So we have a big ridge coming in, coming in this way. And this ridge is getting big and strong because of this trough coming in in this direction, setting up on the west coast. So that produces another ridge on the east coast. And sure enough, we see that as we go further out in time. This is now day seven, day eight. And you can see all these models here, yeah, day eight or nine, you can see all the models here. Here's a European on the left, right here. Yes, here's the, um, oops, ECM, here's our GFS, here's our Canadian. And um, you can see that the, all the models are showing the vortex here, very powerful. They all have a lot of blocking here and a big ridge in Scandinavia and Siberia. You can all see that. And that produces a trough right here on the West Coast and that gives you your ridge. Here's your trough, here's your ridge. Here's your trough, here's your ridge. And with the vortex centered over uh, the North Pole like that, what that means is that we have, in all three models, we have a positive Arctic Oscillation. We have a positive NAO. And we have a negative PNA. Sorry for the crappy writing, but it's midnight, so let's get to it. Anyway, don't hold me, don't. I'm giving you a little slack here, folks. It's midnight. Anyways, that's what all those that's what all these models are showing, and that's a warm pattern in September. It's a warm pattern any time of year, but especially in September. All right. As we go further out in time, this is the European 240 hours. In detail, you can see the big trough on the west coast, the big ridge on the east coast. That's pretty pretty self-explanatory. And that's a warm pattern. Now, again, your afternoon temperature is getting to 90 degrees in some areas, upper 80s in other areas. 
Um, but once the, the the sun is coming down sooner, the sun's a little weaker. So that means your evening temperatures drop off rapidly. We're not going to see 90, 92 degrees at 7 o'clock at night. The temperatures are going to be back into low to mid 80s. The humidity will be lower as well. And the overnight low temperatures will get down into, into low 70s and upper 60s, mid 60s in many areas. Again, not nearly as hot as what we saw in July and early August. This is the 240-hour hemispheric shot. And again, very clear let me uh, get up my marker. You can see it. There's our vortex. Big thing sitting right there. We have a, there's our big ridge right here. You can see this very clearly. The big ridge is very strong right here. And we have a big, tr there's our um, trough coming to the west coast. The ridge goes up from the eastern Pacific towards the Bering Sea. The trough comes on the west coast and the ridge comes up on the east coast. Bada boom, bada bing, bada boom. And that's a warm pattern here. And that vortex staying there in position over the Arctic region ensures it's going to stay warm pattern. If we look at our uh, temperature anomalies at day 10, this is our uh, min temperatures, quite warm above relative to normal over the Great Lakes and New England into southeastern Canada. Because remember, in mid as we get into September, our daily temperatures are dropping off, especially at night. So in this pattern, that's not going to happen as much. So we get a bigger temperature anomaly. And this is the max temperature anomaly. And again, uh, the eastern United States, we're all pretty warm, especially New England, southeastern Canada. But look how chilly it is relative to normal over the West Coast, the Can uh, California, the Rockies, the southwestern states with strong temperature anomalies there. And if we look at the day 15 map, not much has changed. Three big ridges, you can clearly see them, locking the vortex in place. So the Arctic Oscillation stays positive, the NAO stays positive, the trough stays over Western Canada, and the ridges over the Eastern United States. Now, it looks like it's weakening a little bit by mid-September, but it's still overall a very warm pattern relative to normal. And if we look at our rainfall map over the next two weeks from the European Ensemble, look at this, folks. Look how dry it is over the eastern United States. Now this blue here down to the Tennessee Valley, that is only half inch to three quarters of an inch of rain. That's not a lot of rain for the next two weeks. Obviously very dry on the west coast, but look how dry it is in the eastern United and New England, the mid-Atlantic, all the way down to the Tennessee Valley. Pretty impressive in this sort of pattern. Anyway, that's the report. I'm meteorologist DT. I'll talk to you soon.